and welcome back to Family Quest. I'm standing here in the recreated ancient village based on the trail road. Let me walk you through it before we talk about the specifics. Okay, at the outer edge we have some uh, small uh, homes. We've got several of these around the outskirts of the village. We've got some uh, crops laid out and pen with animals. There are a couple more homes. They are largely lit with candles, although we have torches in there too. You can see large pots on display. Here we have a vineyard of berry bushes. In the back here we have more of the single dwelling homes and more crops. Now for our main buildings. We have our work area here. This would be the room for construction of um, cloth goods, textiles, as well as probably some other things. Um, they may have dyed terracotta in here as well. We should probably put some terracotta blocks over here, some wood blocks. On this side we have the single largest structure, which is the uh, temple. We have a large uh, base with uh, mud brick as a primary building material. And we have a ladder up to this partial terracotta area. There may have been a uh, room here for the priest. That is speculation. Uh, more storage rooms. Temples and primitive cultures are often used to store uh, goods for public consumption. And then we have uh, the uh, holy shrine at the top where the priest is only allowed. We do have a roof exit. see that like the small buildings and the uh, work building, we have a wooden roof on the temple and especially uh, the back half of the roof here which is sloped. Then finally we have our uh, granary the grind wheel and shelves for storage of both large and small pots which could be used to store grain. And we have our observatory. Uh, you've got similar storage here, pots and also barrels that could be used for storage of the uh, wine or fruit juice if you will from that, from the berries. Then up top, we have a, a cartography table, and we have an opening to the ceiling. Let's do this. No, we cannot that there. Maybe we'll put candles here. And that is our reconstructed area, our reconstructed village. So, let's go over some of the choices that were made. Okay, first off, the outbuildings. It is pretty typical uh, in archaeological sites for the main buildings 
um, to weather and be preserved while the uh, common buildings which are more shoddily built of less uh, durable materials uh, to not survive. You can see this in Mesoamerica where you have uh, these uh, sites like Chichen Itza where you have uh, stone buildings and pyramids sticking out of the jungle and yet the entire area was once inhabited um, and you only locate all these um, houses by ground radar which of course we don't have. Same thing is true of uh, uh, Scandinavian buildings uh, from the iron, early Iron Age and beyond which uh, the wooden constructions may have rotted entirely away and they only find that there was a village there when they find pylons that were driven into the mud of the river or a lake. So it's fairly safe to assume that they had some type of common buildings for uh, just residences. We also know that they had livestock. Let's take those two off. They had livestock uh, because we have found leads as uh, artifacts. Now, no conclusive proof that they've had pigs or cows, but both of these were found in the area. Uh, we would suspect they had sheep because we know they uh, had uh, dye for using on something. It is possible that dye could have only been used on terracotta, but it's unlikely. Uh, same thing is true as farm. We found both wheat and wheat seeds. We did not find any berries in the artifacts, but the fact is that the berries are uh, grow wild in this area. In fact, there were berries right in this spot. So, uh, then we have this construction here, which I at least first labeled the pool, and it is entirely possible that it is a pool. It could be for immersion, uh, which is a common practice, not just among Christians, but other primitive societies. But I chose to uh, believe because of the availability of berries that this might be a pit where they place, pick the berries, they place them in there, and they stomp on them to make grape, uh, or rather berry juice, which could be turned into wine. That, the fact that they had large pots, uh, is, uh, is another indicator that that may be the case. Okay, the observatory building was pretty much intact, with the exception of a few blocks that had been knocked out of place or went away. Uh, it is speculation that there was an open uh, opening at the top, but there was a cartography table found in the original, and the fact that there was indicates that this has something to do with uh, map building. The fact that the building is not very tall um, might indicate that they were looking at something directly above, observing the sun instead of uh, observing the area. There were no windows found in this building, but the top was missing. And uh, position of the sun is important for primitive people, so they know when to plant and when to uh, reap their crops. Then we have the granary again. This was fairly complete. It did have shelves complete on one wall. We added shelves to another wall. Probably not on this one because there were steps down to the base and this grindstone which more modern people would use for sharpening uh, iron tools could have been used as a grindstone for wheat. Okay, the wood bracing around the bases of the mud brick buildings uh, we talked about before it uh, there are no remnants of these uh, braces found but 
Now the shape of the mud brick buildings do indicate that there is like a chunk out of the corner, so this might have been present. Um, probably the most controversial decision would be, well, to one of two things. Uh, one is the wooden roofs. Um, and there are several reasons to suppose these existed, even though they're not in the archaeological evidence. For one thing, most of the buildings have no roofs in the original um, um, ruins here. The roofs are missing here, here, and definitely here. Uh, we do know that the uh, climate was very similar to what it is now. The only wood, oh yeah, you can see berries off in the distance. The only wood uh, that survived in the excavation was a hanging sign, and it was a spruce wood sign. So they did have access to spruce. The area was probably fairly um, heavily forested as it is now. And so wooden roofs uh, would not only seem appropriate, they seem likely. And finally, this building. Um, an argument could be made that that was that the upper portion of this was not part of this building; that they were two separate buildings. And that is definitely a possibility. I choose chose to believe that this had been pushed off by movement of earth. Um, the fact that it's on top of the road here um, the fact that uh, the design seems rather jumbled and this piece matches with this piece uh, all seem to indicate to me that this was uh, one structure that was damaged and knocked it down um, that's not the only uh, interpretation of this. I'm sure somebody else could uh, interpret this as being two buildings, or rather a different shape of one building even. And then over here also you had mud brick. And I chose to interpret that this was has uh, displaced from this building as, all, uh, as well, which would have accounted for the additional mud brick for construction over here. Because there's no reason for mud brick to be inside of the, this building. Um, you should make the argument that uh, it was the roof that fell in. But why would anyone who had built the majority of their building out of uh, regular clay brick then build a roof of mud brick in this climate? It just doesn't make any sense. So, that is our reconstructed village. Let me do a quick fly over here so you can get an idea of what it is. Here we go. It looks uh, interesting, and in some ways, it looks more uh, modern and well built than some of the. Um, contemporary villages of the villagers uh, mostly because of the road. Okay. So uh, also a note about the windows. I chose not to put windows in the individual buildings uh, because usually they would be poor constructions than the main buildings. And these buildings um, would have more effort put into them. This, uh, there was a pink glass recovered. There was also red glass, which I didn't use. And there was, there were two shades of blue glass, which I put into the temple. Um, so it is possible that even there, 
outer buildings had glass, and that's something else that they could have built in the workhouse there in the brick building. Uh, they could have smelted glass and dyed it. I think that was a communal building, and that's where the majority of their actual work was taking place. So here are our artifacts. Uh, we did not build a record player, even though they have uh, records. Uh, they have plenty of pots. There's the, some of the blue uh, dye. They had um, emeralds for exchange. There's a hoe along with wheat, wheat seeds down here, which indicate that they produce wheat. They had quite a few candles, uh, pottery shards, of course. They had armor trims, red glass, pink pink glass, blue glass, there's our hanging sign, clay, and uh, predominantly the largest uh, collection of things was the dye. Uh, lots of different colors of dye. So this uh, village probably was primarily concerned with producing dye or dyeing materials that they had uh, either collected or purchased from other places. We know they have a purchasing economy because they have emeralds. They also have a golden nugget here. The absence of more gold probably indicates that it's fairly rare. This might have been from a jewelry piece. So we're going to pack up our materials here and we have just one more thing to finish up and that is our Trail Runes Visitor Center. And then there, there and here we are going to store our books Let's, with information about the uh, ruins and the reconstruction and the archaeological evidence here. Uh, for instance, let's see.
So there we have one book. And we'll do all our others later. And this has taken, in Minecraft time, a couple of months to excavate, then to reconstruct, then to build the infrastructure like this, like the visitor center. So I'm looking forward to putting down the details in the books and then packing up and heading back to the main part of our uh, world about 4,000 blocks away. Well, thanks for joining me on this excavation and uh, interpretation journey of the trail ruins. As always, I'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, please press that like. And as always, keep on Minecrafting.